Welcome to Mindfulness Manufacturing. My name is Trevor Blondiel. Spending 25 years in manufacturing, I discovered the real impact we have on turnover, communication, and the ability to manage change is how we show up. That's the essence of emotional intelligence. In each episode, we bring a guest or message to expand your skills, engage your people, and grow your organization. So let's jump in. Being in the fifth year of this podcast now, traditionally when I bring on guests, I say, hey, our listeners, they seem to resonate with stories more than lessons. And the same concept applies in manufacturing. You know, we see that in the daily basis where we're telling people what to do. We're explaining why it should be done a certain way or what that outcome needs to look like. And this whole storytelling, I'm getting more and more questions about this concept and and from leaders in manufacturing. And, you know, how do we tell better stories and, and, you know, the, the importance of that and just speaking in general, right? We talk about that on the podcast as well. So today I brought on my friend, Trevor Perry. Uh, He is a storyteller. So I didn't have to talk to Trevor about storytelling today. Uh, He's an Australian from an Irish heritage who lives in the U.S. now. Uh, We met through the National Speakers Association in in Minneapolis and uh, connected on this whole concept of storytelling and and how we connect with people. And uh, he's an award-winning speaker, author, and storyteller. He's worked in technology since the internet dark ages of the 80s. And I love the 80s. (laughs) I just don't have that sound I can can make for the uh, (laughs) dial-up connection right now. But uh, well, Welcome, Trevor, to the show. Hey, Trevor, thanks for having me. It's a privilege and an honor. <laughs> well, you got a heck of a great name to, to start it off. So uh, we, we don't meet too many other people with that, with that same name. So, hey, the, the story of how did you get into this whole storytelling path and, and connecting this with technology and corporations and manufacturing? So when I was a kid and I was bullied, my defense was to be silly. And it became storytelling at that point. And I didn't realize that's what it was. And I went through a fairly big life event and ended up in Austin. And I started taking classes that were improv classes. I did poetry readings, uh, film acting. It was quite a strange thing. And then I started performing at the Renaissance Festival where I had to develop a character and I had to build stories to entertain the people. And I had found something, but I was also working in tech and I call myself a computer weenie. And in (laughs) tech, uh, somebody said, you're not a programmer, Trevor, because you have a personality. (laughs) Uh, They said, you're a left brain and right brain person. And and I didn't even know what that was at the time, but I've been called the creative force in a world of technology because I have unique approaches to solving problems. I mean, that's what technology is about, is solving individual problems, whether they're business problems or little things. But that's what I've been doing. I've been creating. And in creating, I found some stories to tell to the tech audiences that were balanced, Mm -hmm. motivational. And that became a passion of mine. And I was asked to do a session called Finding Your Passion. And in Mm -hmm. the middle of it, I didn't know what mine was. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And after all of my (laughs) history and the way that I was and who I was and what was going on in my life, we found out in that session that I'm a storyteller. That's my passion. And so since then, I've been teaching storytelling to speakers and to businesses in many different forms. And I've discovered the power of storytelling. When somebody owns a story, lives that story, feels that story when they're telling it, even in a sales situation, it's much more of a connection and it sets Mm -hmm. you differently than your competitor. And so I've noticed this in all different places in the business world. My history has been accounting and I've worked for software companies in manufacturing distribution in so many different things. And I've seen the power of stories and the power of bad stories. Mm. (laughs) And um, just when you're in a world that requires you to be on your game, you're working for success, whatever your business goals, I've seen storytelling be effective at the lowest level of the person who's doing the hands-on work and the highest level of the people in the boardroom, that storytelling changes, well, it changes business, it changes lives. And if we want to use a fancy word, offers success. (laughs) (laughs) It's just, I mean, that's another marketing pitch, isn't it? Yeah. I I can't help thinking about it now. Our brain sometimes goes to the negative. So I think the listeners will too. (laughs) I got to ask, so a bad story, What, what makes a bad story? So first, thing about a bad story is the person doesn't believe it. Uh, another bad story mm. is somebody reading. We see so many people presenting 
a story and they have slides and they read what's on the slide. You, don't need that. <laughs> um, you know, bad stories are literally, they don't have a structure or a framework or a point or a perk. And, you know, you can also have bad storytellers. I always say that there are bad stories, bad storytellers. There's good stories and good storytellers. And you may get a combination. You may get a good storyteller with a bad story and you feel mm -hmm. like it's a good story because of the way that <laughs> Oh, I like that. Yeah. Say that again. So yeah, you can, if you're a good story teller, you can make a story that's not that interesting applicable just because you tell it so well. Exactly. I mean, you know, just look at any film that's your favorite film yeah. and you get lost in some of those characters. I mean, look at Tom Hanks. How many mm. stories has he told? And yet he's always Tom Hanks. But we mm. believe that he's that character, even though it's Tom Hanks and he's extremely recognizable, but he's a storyteller in his acting and the way that he connects with you. Oh man, he made me believe that he was Mr. Rogers. Yep. Took me right, right back to my childhood. Yep, yep. And yet he's a guy on an island with a with a basketball or, or yeah. I mean a volleyball. <laughs> it's you know, storytelling is a way to connect. Yeah. And connection in the world that we live in, which is disconnected, you know, the pandemic disconnected a lot of us socially distanced us. Storytelling can connect us and good storytelling good storytellers can also be a way to connect. We've seen that. I mean, you know, your parents tell you stories when you're growing up. And I know I still tell some of the stories that my dad used to mm -hmm. tell. Me. And even as I got older and he told me about his invention. And so some of those are just really compelling. The thing is, is if I'm relating that story, I have to feel it. Otherwise it's somebody else's story. Mm. And that's another way for a bad story to happen is, is I heard, you know, Trevor tell his story. And so now I'm going to tell it like it's mine. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. also a bad story. And I think that's the difference, right? Is that you can tell a story about another situation if you're transparent with that, but you can't fake it and turn it into your story because then people will will read that, right? Whereas the fact of, hey, let me tell you a story about a person that I was working with and what I saw or what we experienced together. Uh, and, and we hear that in the speaking industry too, right? If you try to tell someone else a story, you just can't tell it with the same emotion. And I, and I resonate with what you're saying too, the authenticity of feeling that story. Because sometimes I've told you know stories about my family situations and if I've rushed it and I'm just trying to get the point across. It's like, oh, that was, if I just would have put a little more emotion into the story, if I would have, yep. you know, told it like it was the first time I was ever telling it and just, yep. all I had, I, I, and all I have to do is just think about how I felt in that moment yep. when I say it. And then whoever I'm talking to can connect with us. It's the tapping into your emotions. And this is an act, acting skill. And I took a film acting class and it was quite incredible. And, and what I learned was, if you feel what's happening in that story, you connect. And I've had that with audiences. I have a story that makes people tell me in the audience, don't make me cry. And I've told the same story and nothing. And so, mm -hmm. you know, good storyteller may not be a good storyteller every day. You have to be connected to that. And business is hard because in business, if you're generally like a company has a bunch of story. And if I'm going to walk into a job, maybe it's a pre-sales or a sales job, and I'm going to tell a story that somebody else, mm -hmm. I have to make it my own. So I have to talk about how it makes me feel and how I'm connected mm. to that story. So there's always a challenge in there to take somebody else's story. And in business, you have the business stories and the business stories aren't your personal ones. So how do you connect with them and how do you feel? Mm -hmm. Which means, and, and this is a, a key to storytelling, is companies, whatever industry you're in, need story bank. Mm. And they need to have a bank of stories that people can use for different environments and different situations. And they have to adopt them and own them themselves and talk about how they connect with that story. So if you don't, <laughs> then it'll just become another bad story and you won't yeah. be, you know, you won't be any different than anybody else. And one of my favorite exercises to do with manufacturing plants is, you know, if they're redefining or coming up with their core values and it's just like, okay, it's, this is not a textbook. This is not a pick the words. This is just, let's talk about some stories. How do we get here? Yep. Right. And in those passionate stories of those weekends that everybody worked through to meet this customer demand or what this person did. I mean, those are the stories that make core values. And, uh, and it's just like, it, they still use them today. 
right? That's because it yep. was from their stories. It wasn't what their customers wanted to see. And if you want to communicate those core values, you've got to be able to tell those stories and you've got to feel them as you tell them. So if, if somebody doesn't have the core values of their company, haven't adopted, you'll notice that they won't be feeling them. It will just be flat. Yeah. You, you got to have something that either that it was retold so well, like I know sometimes, you know, if you look at Apple, it could be someone working there today telling stories about Steve Jobs and they weren't there, but yep. those types of stories can be retold right because it's kind of like hey yep. this this is this is the story and and you're being honest the fact of you don't know steve but this is the folklore story of you know how we got here and yep. this is just some of the behaviors and this is kind of how it translates to today i read that you know the stories are like 20 times more 22 times more memorable than a lesson and and I don't know, there wasn't, and I kind of tried to do a little bit of research on that. There wasn't a lot of factual, but it seems like it seems to resonate with people. And we just seem to remember stories better. And it's, so there's, there's another thing that I teach people when I'm teaching creativity classes. And that is if you use your pen and your hand to write something down, it'll stick in your memory longer mm. than if you type it on a keyboard. And so there are things that our human nature and the brain works on. And because human nature, when I actually uh, introduced my storytelling presentation, and I did it today for a friend, I have a picture of Australian indigenous people sitting around a fire sharing stories. It's been going on for centuries. In fact, tens of thousands of years of people passing stories down. It's inherent to our human nature to tell stories. And for example, if you're sitting around a campfire, or if you're sitting at a bar, watch mm. people because when somebody tells a story, somebody comes up with another story to top that and they <laughs> go around the room. But what are they doing? They're telling stories. Sure, I'm trying to get the one up, and I'm, but they're telling stories. Mm -hmm. That's what they do with one another. That's how we connect. You know, you and I might meet up in, in uh, you know, a restaurant somewhere and have a chat for lunch. What are we going to be doing? We're going to be sharing stories. So human nature is, I think, adjusted to stories as a way of communicating. And I think that's why it's easy than having to follow. And, and look, there are some good teachers who in a lesson can tell a story and it'll stick. But most lessons are follow this by rote, learn this, you know, learn, learn, this is a task, do it, now you've learned it kind of thing. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I would agree. I would say it's way more than 22 times. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I think it kind of gets a little confused with, you know, you hear about a mentor versus a coach. Okay. So a, a mentor is going to be able to tell you their experiences, uh, but it doesn't mean that they're just saying, Hey, here's, here's my story. This is how I did it. You should do it too. And I think that's where mentoring can be more powerful. Like it doesn't always have to be about you as the mentor. It can be just like, Hey, you're kind of in this situation. Here's, here's a story about what happened here. And, and just, you know, if you can make that engaging enough to help that person think through it, that's trying to grow and develop, you know, it's just relatable. For me, when I start teaching story, every story has to have a purpose. And if you're a mentor, you have a purpose. I actually spent time as a mentor today and I told some personal stories, but it was to demonstrate a point. It had a purpose for each of the stories and it wasn't egotistical in the telling of it. You know, there wasn't a brag in there. There was a this is how it happened. And I even told a story about my grandfather's dog. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, and that's not necessarily an egotistical thing, but it was my experience. It was personal to me and it mm. demonstrated some kind of point. So if you're using stories as a mentor, you typically uh, are doing that for a purpose. And coaches, some have that ability. Mm -hmm. I find a lot of coaches have a do it this way approach. There's less storytelling. And I think that yeah. goes back to the lesson. It's just yeah. a lesson. So, yeah. And that's different. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of coaches, life coaches. I would call myself a storytelling coach. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But uh, hey, we maybe I should call myself storytelling mentor. <laughs> Yeah, I think that with what you're describing, what I'm resonating with is that if you're always the hero in the story, that's probably, you probably need to shift your storytelling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the purpose is to make yourself look good versus the purpose is to demonstrate or tell a lesson or, you know, illustrate something, describe something, but it's, it's always got to be your personal perspective. There's no doubt about yeah. that. You are telling the story from your perspective. I had uh, a trip to um, Dodge City one year and mm -hmm. I got to ride around with the cops on Friday night from 11 PM till 3 AM. And I had a guy who drove up there with me from Fort Worth and 
he drove with a different cop. We had some adventures. And <laughs> I bet. Frankie and I had these great stories. We attended a robbery. We found a citizen's arrest that was illegal. I mean, it was just, we had so much fun. So on the way drive home back to Fort Worth, I related all these stories. To mm. And a week later, one of my friends came and said, boy, he had a great time in Dodge City. And she told me all my stories that he <laughs> actually represented as his. And she said there was something fishy about it. Because I had all the details when I told the stories. I had had all the details. Mm -hmm. I had the way it made me feel. He tried to represent it as by rote. You know, we did this and we went here and we did this. And it just wasn't, it didn't seem genuine to her. Mm -hmm. And it turns out it was all my stories. And he just didn't, he didn't own it. It wasn't his personal perspective. So he was trying to own it and that became ego, got in the way. Mm. And it just made it feel very non-genuine. You said it right in there. You kind of snuck that in there. It's the feelings. Right. Yep. Like if you didn't experience it, you don't know what it felt like. Yep. It's hard to represent that. And like we have everyday stories and, and the more that we just kind of pay attention yep. and you know, it's, it's, you, you don't have to cl climb Mount Everest and save lives to have <laughs> yeah. great stories. They're, yep. they're in front of us every day. Yep. Right. Just witnessing somebody doing something kind. Yep. You know? Just yep. being a it's, part. You know, storytelling truly helps you connect with people, whether it's you connecting with an audience or whether it's connecting to a customer or a partner in business, whether it's even connecting with your employees. Uh, I'm working on a program right now uh, on H AI, but AI for HR. And HR is responsible for culture in a company. And in spreading a culture, you do it with story. That's mm. how you do it because that's how you connect with your employees. And you can tell when, uh, you know, I have a, a friend who works for a very large computer company in Austin. And she said, nope, the rules are I can only take this day off and that day off. And if I don't take this day off, I don't get it. And there's all these rules and there's no <laughs> connection no. to the organization, to the company. And it's storytelling changes the culture. I had a friend who was the director of corporate culture and it's like, I want that job. <laughs> and how he went about it was he was representing, you know, morals, ethics, policies with stories. And it truly just the culture of the place when I got there and became an employee myself blew my mind. I still have friends from the year 2000 that I, I was I, with orientation with who are my friends still today. And I see them. And the first thing we do is say hi and hug. And, you know, we haven't been together for a long time because we were, we were told the same stories and that connected us as well as the storyteller mm. and the cult. It was great. I'm thinking if I'm a leader in manufacturing, I'm thinking about like, you remind me with those days off of like, we got to roll a different policy. We got to, we got to roll something out and, you know, we get focused on, you know, explain the why, and this is the changes. And, but really it's like, can we go deep? than that like can, can we just connect so that we're all connected on like this this policy change or this this uh, maybe scheduling change that's going to affect our personal lives and rotations and hours that we're working and it's like how do we how do like why are we doing this like what's the story because if it's just a dictation it's just you know dictatorial in the fact that this is what we're doing and you're just explaining what then you get resentful people you get gossip you'll get people behind but the culture is is if I come to you and tell you a story, how you t tell that story and what you deliver is going to be different in every situation. I mean, it might be just changing production. And um, I noticed that, for example, Tesla right now, they're going to change the production line that has been st that was started with Ford Model T. And they're going to actually put pieces together slowly and paint them, yeah. in, but all simultaneously, and they'll all come together. And it's going to cut down the amount of people. It's going to mm. cut down the effort. It's going to make it cheaper to buy that car. And why are they doing it? Now, I don't know that Tesla has this, but this might be a way to tell a story about what's good for the planet is because we're expending less energy to build this thing that saves you from using fossil fuels or what, however you want, you can yes. come up with a story like that. That's more compelling than I'm sorry, but I'm firing <laughs> you know, <laughs> a bunch of you because I don't need you. And yeah, you know, there's, there's ways to address that and ways to tell that story. And again, you've also got to have a good storyteller. Yeah. And I think that's, that's why investing and having this conversation. And if you're listening to this podcast right now that, you know, you'll be a little more mindful when you come in. Right. And, and I think the way we get better at telling stories is telling more stories and being more intentional on it. I know for me, writing it down, um, like you said, when you put that pen to paper, that definitely, definitely helps me. And I've got to, 
a person that I'm working with that, that is a leader and this person works in manufacturing and, and they look after a lot of scheduling and uh, customer interface and, you know, moving parts around and and there's people in and out of his office all the time. And and he's the one that kind of inspired me, right? Because he's kind of like, hey, I need to get better at storytelling. Yep. Like, I, I know that that's going to help me. And I kind of, now I kind of understand like why he's looking for that help because he's dealing with a lot of people on a lot of different changes. And uh, so if he was on here now and he just wants to get better, what would you be, what would be your advice to, to start? How do you get better? So one of the amazing organizations on the planet, other than National Speakers Association, of course, is, <laughs> is Toastmasters. Uh, yes. Toastmasters is not a storytelling organization. What it does give you is practice in standing and speaking and polishing and getting mm -hmm. that polish. But you have to bring story and you have to write stories. And I think they're five to seven minute stories is what you get to tell at Toastmasters. That changes your approach to the actual creating of the story. And so you have to start weaving stories and building stories that when you present them, which is that I call that stagecraft. So your stagecraft is going to help you be more comfortable in telling those stories. And ultimately, that should make you a better storyteller. Creating the stories, there are, I, I would say there are other skills that people could learn. And this is strange because people go, why would I do that? But improv is a really good way mm. for you to generate and create ideas. Improv is not about being funny. What it is, it's a set of rules and practices that you have in your back pocket so that when you encounter a situation you haven't encountered before, you can deal with it. And yes. the premise of that is yes and. By learning improv and improv skills, your storytelling goes up higher because you don't put blocks in your stories. You know, yes and is the most incredible thing. I teach that to people. I say, if I said to you, you have a frog on your head and you go, no, I don't. Then <laughs> we don't have a story. But if I say you have a frog on your head and you go, yes, his name is Fred. You want to meet him. Now we're having a story and now we're building a story. And, and the other thing about creativity is with when you teach creativity, these are a lot of skills that people don't often feel that they have. Creativity is you say whatever is on your mind, obviously within, you know, maybe not so rude limits, but you, in an environment where you're being creative, you it's spaghetti on the wall. You throw everything out so that maybe something that sounds really silly and stupid and you normally block it, maybe that leads to something else, to something else. And that rabbit hole produces a story at the end of it. So creativity, improv, you know, speaker craft, I guess stage craft is, yeah. those are all really good things. And a lot of that, uh, I, I had friends who were programmers who actually did uh, acting in local theater company and boy could they tell a story because that's what <laughs> they had to do they had to get on stage and tell that story, I bet. be in that character and tell the story from that character so they were brilliant storytellers and weird geeks all at the same time <laughs> <laughs> I love it. well this is a good call back to episode 97 michael port and uh, i had him talk a little bit about that whole yes and and i got the t-shirt you know just to, to remind me of like keep the conversation going yep like like even just in general, like, like you said, around the campfire, and it's like, well, that didn't, that couldn't happen. Well, don't say yep. that. Just say yes. And, yep. you know, and you can just kind of build off. And, uh, and I think the other lesson that I've had to focus on getting better and it, and it's sometimes tests my patience level when someone else is telling a story, it's like, often we don't need the whole background. We need yep. that uh, because, you know, you got the exposition, which is kind of like the, the setup and you've got the action and then you got the resolution and the action where is where we want to dance. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're going to play back and forth in characters and kind of what happened. And uh, I, I think that's the, the one area that I've learned to get better at is uh, people don't need all the background and they yep. sometimes get a little bored in that space. But if you, if you can get them right into an action, then you're going to have a lot more fun. And one of the challenges that we have is, is a really weird opposite thing, which is active listening. And active listening, oftentimes we don't. When it gets boring, we start to go somewhere else or we start to think about what our next response is. And we're trying to work on our own story. Mm. And sometimes a little bit of patience can enable that story to get it out. Why would a person tell all those things? Because it's important to them. So understanding why they might be telling that also mm, helps. Uh, I like that. And, but watching that and learning, it's like us watching other speakers. Mm -hmm. We learn from that. So when that happens to you, think more about why is it that they are doing that? Is it their insecurities? Is it because somewhere in there, you know, a standard story is, 
a, a rule of thumb is if the joke is really long, the punchline better be really big. <laughs> I love that. And it's the same thing. I mean, maybe <laughs> they're going to have a really big punchline and you might have to wait for it, but just understand their perspective because it'll help you with yours. Yeah. Respectful of people's time. So speaking of that, Trevor, what, what do we want to leave the listeners with today? They're coming back into the plant. They're going to talk about you and storytelling. What's the main message you, you want them to leave with today? So as a human, you are a storyteller. You may not have practiced that skill, but it's not that far away. And talk about the way things make you feel. Mm. That feel, that being vulnerable to certain things in certain environments, obviously, is going to make you connect better with your audiences. So be you. Don't try and be anybody else. Tell your stories and feel them be open, be vulnerable. That's great advice. And that's good for all of us. And and the surprise sometimes is like even in my own keynote, the story about my son is in, in the struggles that me I had in the way I needed to change is the one that resonates with people the most, right? And it is probably the most vulnerable and 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 it's it's a good story. And uh we all and we all have these good great stories. So uh thank you so much. And and if the listeners want to learn more, follow you, how do, how do they do that? I've been working on personal stories on Medium, but you can find me at trevorperry.com. That's an easy way to connect with me. And you can see uh I can share with you some of the offerings that I have for companies and the way I've done that. And you can listen to me for a while, you can schedule a call with me and we can have a chat about it. So maybe I right can on. help just with a conversation. Well, thanks so much for helping manufacturing be a little more mindful in our storytelling today. And I appreciate you coming on and I appreciate everything I learned from you, Trevor. Trevor, it was great. Go tell more stories. Hey folks, appreciate you taking the time to join us today. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with someone. Haven't subscribed yet? Do it now. Remember, if you want results, the key is increasing your awareness of how you show up.